The following podcast topics are not for minor age listeners. Please take the time to skip to another podcast if your children are present. If you are an adult faint at heart or a victim, please be advised that discussions in this episode contain topics about SA and other conversations that may be triggering. Thank you. Welcome back to The Betrayed. This is Gina Beck. This is Drew Williams. Thank you for listening, liking, commenting, and subscribing. We appreciate y'all, especially all the listeners over on Spotify, iHeart, and Apple Podcasts. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, and like always, thank you again for the continued support, the continued engagement, and the hashtag BananaCats. How are you? I'm good, G. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm excited to get into this podcast. Are you going first? Yeah, I think I'm going to go first. Uh, this one's... From my area, I don't usually cover stories directly from the Central Coast, but this one kind of hits home. I've got family up in, it's about 40 minutes north of me. It's in a town called uh, Tascadero. This was reported January 19th. District Attorney Dan Dow announced on Thursday, January 19th, that Nathan Daniel Abbott, of Atascadero has been arrested and charged with oral copulation of a person under the age of 18 and rape of an intoxicated victim. Both charges are felonies. The allegations involve two separate victims. The crimes are alleged to have occurred between August 2008 and December 2010. In April 2022, Abbott and a San Luis Obispo business owner was accused of sexual assault by multiple women. Former San Luis Obispo resident Ash Riddell, 31, posted to Instagram accusing Abbott, owner of Nate's Barbershop in Atascadero, and Ken Coffee owner Julian Contreras in San Luis Obispo of sexual assault in August of 2012. Riddell said that she felt more comfortable sharing her story once she left the state. Since last April, Abbott's Barbershop has been operating under the name Cardinal Barbershop although it's unclear exactly when the name change was made. It is anticipated that the defendant will be arraigned on charges on January 20th in Department 3 of Slow County Superior Court. Abbott was presently housed at the San Luis Obispo County Jail with a bail set at half a million dollars. They go on to say it's important to note that a criminal complaint contains allegations that must be proven beyond a reasonable doubt in the court of law, Every defendant is presumed innocent until proven guilty. And I checked right before we started recording. There's been no updates, and there was nothing from actually on the 20th about when his arraignment was. But this is one of those stories where we usually end with with a little bit of hope. I guess we're starting it today because it's quite a long time ago to finally get some justice. It's a lot of time that's passed, and I, I really hope both these women get the justice they deserve i hope these they throw the book at both these guys yeah definitely for anyone that's in even similar situations as this it's probably such a stressful like heartbreaking process to go through so when they finally do get justice it's just like so much relief you know and i hope they get that yeah absolutely and uh i checked on uh familywatchdog.us with his name and everything so this guy has no history, uh, uh, well, at least sexual criminal history. So it makes you wonder how many more victims are have happened in between that time. Hopefully yeah. this pushes more people to come forward as well. The unknown, right? And, and that goes for every case. I, how many people do we not know about, you know, or could not even be here to know about, right? Yeah, yeah, a lot of past cases, I'm sure, that have gone to the grave. Yeah, so unfortunate. This next thing I wanted to talk about, I, I came across this clip, and then I looked it up, and and it was something that I think Drew and I had talked about, right, back in August, you said, in 2022, but we looked in our episodes, and it's not in an episode, so we must have briefly talked about it in messages or something. And now there's just more information coming out. And I just wanted to speak on it because it's very, it's alarming. And I think people, um, 
you know, there's there's just there's two ways you can see it right from a situation like this well this is a same sex couple two men charged with horrible crimes to their adopted sons uh, including pimping them out to a, a ring of weirdos like like how could you do that how could you solicit your kids online and also to to a, a pedo ring like i don't even i hate even that word but i guess more information came out that they're from georgia and they recorded cp and allegedly pimped them out to members of a local pedo ring according to a disturbing new report it's been a months long investigation and it was revealed by William Day Zulak and Zachary Jacob Zulak that they use social media to prostitute their two elementary age sons. Uh, William Zulak is a government worker and Zachary Zulak is a banker. They were indicted in August. To, <laughs> yeah, just like I said, right? When you had brought it up when it first came out in August 2022 on charges of insect, incest, aggravated sodomy aggravated child molestation felony exploit sexual exploitation of children and felony prostitution of a minor but the shocking investigation reveals in more detail the sickening abuse the boys suffered for the first time it was revealed that the men allegedly had pimped out their older sons now 11 and 9 years old to two other men in a pedo ring one of the men, Hunter Clay Lawless, 27, told investigators that Zachary, whose Instagram bio describes him as a papa to our two wonderful boys and an activist, invited him multiple times to take part in abusing the boys. Lawless claims he never had physical contact with either of the children, though, and he also claimed that Zachary sent him multiple messages on Snapchat uh, including one that allegedly read, I'm going to F my son tonight. Stand by along with images of himself abusing the 11-year-old. But like practically bragging about it, essentially. The two men were arrested on charges of soliciting an act of prostitution with the 11-year-old boy. According to the indictment, it's unclear whether Lawless and Armando Sanchez had any physical interactions with the boys, though. We'll put the, the article in the description so you guys can read for yourself and you guys can see their faces. Their faces are in this article, uh, the two men. So these are just regular people. Why I wanted to talk about this is because the pictures, they just look like regular people. Just regular, like you would, like, you know how I, we've even... I, mentioned this before close your eyes right and picture a weirdo who would try to kidnap you or someone that you know in your mind it's probably like a gross looking human right just probably fat and like gross no hair or like crappy hair whatever like just they stand out to you more so than like someone that's like probably your high school teacher or a banker or something like that these guys are those guys, a, a banker of all people, you know? He wears suits probably every day or very nice dress clothing. You would never even think that he would do these things to his adopted children, let alone anyone else. So and Then you got the mask of their social media, which made them look like these wonderful adoptive parents. Mm -hmm. It's every time I've read the crimes about these guys and when you're reading these off right now my heart sinks in my stomach like i get this just like almost pain in my stomach it just i i just can't even fathom how those kids are going to be later on in life i mean to already go through an adoption and then get treated like that is just so many failures to their lives like it just it's sad it's it just really really hurts my heart exactly and one of them being a government worker it doesn't say specifically what type of government worker but what what could that mean um like a he could work in cps that's a government worker what else uh welfare maybe that's a government worker or 
What it else? Just, could just, it could be a county job where they're interacting with kids and adults all day mm. long, all those type of things where you're building relationships with the community. I mean, it, like you said, it could right. be so many different things. And they're both very active in the local LGBTQ community, which means that they're social. They're, you know, very social amongst others. They just, they give them, they present themselves as probably harmless, right? When behind closed doors and interacting with the wrong type of people and just, I just can't believe you, you would like let something horrible or do something horrible to your children, adopted or not. Such a sad story. And I hate to end things on a sad note, but Things like this need to be talked about and it's not just because it's you know big news or whatever because things like this really does happen every day yeah, and i was going to bring this up because i've seen people out of the entire situation the only thing they want to focus on is the fact that these are two gay men and it's like i don't think this really that's not the reason why this happened this happened because these two men are monsters and it's such a stain on their community when they do these type of things. Like it's, yeah. it gives fire to these, the types that really are anti-gay irrationally. And uh, it's just the entire situation is just, it's evil. That's the only way I could describe it. Gay or not, people who adopt children or don't even adopt children do horrible things, you know, gay or not. The horrible things are done. So, just to categorize that with this situation for them is is bypassing their actual crimes and what they've done and how it's actually happening all the time so focus on that how about you focus on maybe what this guy's government job is you know how about you focus on <laughs> if he's around kids all the time like how we just talked about that's a big huge red flag and maybe those kids need their parents to be talked to, not just hear news like this, but actually talk to. Those things should be focused on. And also, did they adopt these children for these reasons? Just like how someone can go into a job where they're surrounded by children, do they seek out the job to be surrounded by children? Well, did these guys ad adopt these children to have their way and uh, you know do what they did there's there's adoptive parents that and maybe not even the sexual thing they uh, they adopt kids and then use them like slave labor mm -hmm. they they literally like, this is not that uncommon for people to adopt children to do terrible things to them exactly it's sad so, so how about focus on those things you know and instead of the gay or not who cares who cares this is why we are held back on a lot of the things that we wish we weren't because if we focused on the right things we'd be a lot farther facts i think we're going to end it there until next time thank you for listening liking commenting and subscribing appreciate y'all banana cats banana cats much love peace